You know, it would be really difficult for me to pick one thing or even five of my favorite things that have changed in the game of Rust over the past 12 or 24 months. But definitely one of the things that would make it onto one of those lists would be the introduction of electricity on our Rust servers. Being able to power up our bases, use logic gates, use switches, use all of these other different things has fundamentally changed the game for me. Now, of course, we all know the basics. We all know that we can get power from windmills. We can get power from solar panels. And of course, if the admin of the server allows us access to it, we can get power from what's called a test generator, which isn't naturally found within the game. But like I said, admins can bring them into the game for us. But I think Face Punch left something on the table there that was kind of smacking them right in the face. And that, of course, is using the actual grid power that's already in the server. Or should I say, should be in the server already. However, it's really not. As we all know, we've seen power poles around the map. We've also got the power stations all over the map. Like we've seen power in the servers. Why aren't we able to use it yet? Well, it's because technically it's not actually there. The power poles, the power stations, all of these other things, those are basically just decorations for us. But thanks to Nicodemus, now we can actually access a power grid that is not natively built into the Rust server, but Nicodemus has found a way to make it all work. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your servers to make your server just a little bit better than everybody else's. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. All right, so the plugin that we're talking about today is called Grid Power. It's available from Loan.Design and the developer's name is Nicodemus. I'll put a link to the plugin and all of the important information in the video description down below. So there's two really important aspects to this plugin. The first one, obviously, it gains us the ability to access a power grid that feels like it's natively within Rust. However, it's not. The second aspect to it is just just a little bit of a tweak to an existing tool that we already have. I'll explain that once we get there. All right, so first things first, before we dive right into the plugin, I wanna show you what this plugin actually looks like. All right, so if we're cruising along and we're looking at the power poles that reside natively within the game, they look pretty normal. However, if you come to the right one, one of the 33% that the plugin will actually select for us, you'll see something different about some of them. So this one here, you'll see that there's actually a button up here that we can press. And there's there's also a couple of root combiners mounted to this power pole. This isn't normal. You've never seen this before. This is what gives us the ability to actually hook into Rust's power grid and actually power our bases without the use of wind, without the use of solar, without the use of any kind of generator whatsoever. We can literally plug our base into the power grid that Nicodemus has created for us. So it just so happens that outside of the base that I built just for this video, this power pole right here has that button at the top and this one doesn't have any root combiners mounted to it that's okay we're going to take care of that i'm going to show you what that looks like but we're going to use this power pole right here to power this base. And we're gonna get rid of that windmill and that solar panel. But before we get into all of that, let's go over the documentation provided from Loan.Design. Let's get all the disclaimer stuff out of the way right away. First of all, I don't normally like to do back-to-back -back premium plugins. That means plugins that are gonna cost you money if you decide you wanna have them on your server. However, this plugin I've been waiting for for quite a few weeks now, and it is finally publicly available. So now I'm excited to bring it to you. I actually hinted about this plugin on a video a couple of weeks ago. So for everybody that watches my videos, religiously every week, you might have noticed that I mentioned a video. This is the plugin that I was talking about. So first off, Nicodemus has done a really good write-up on this plugin. I actually made a comment to him, letting him know that it was primo write-up. He's got all of the details covered. Any questions that you probably might run into are going to be answered just within this documentation, and there's not a whole lot here to read. So basically what this plugin does is it allows us to ladder up these power poles. Yes, you can place ladders on these power poles. I'll show you what that looks like in just a couple of minutes, and then you can actually open up the inventory of the power pole, figure out what items it needs in order to function properly, and then you can connect your base to the power pole. Now, a little bit of a caution for you, Nicodemus has actually built it in realistically that we're dealing with electricity. So you do have to wear the proper attire in order to be protected and safely make these connections. Pro tip, you're probably not gonna wanna do this without at least a hazmat suit. But all of that stuff can be defined in the configuration file. We'll get to that a little bit later. Nicodemus has broken the documentation up into two really important sections, one for admins and one for players. For admins, this plugin is super easy to install. All you have to do is drop grid power into your oxide slash plugins folder it does 
everything else. So what does it do? It actually goes through your server and actually identifies any of the power poles and it will randomly select 33% of them. That's by default. You can change that in the config and determines that those 33% are going to have the ability to have power pulled from them. As far as the quick start section for the players, we're actually going to be doing that on this video. So definitely keep this for reference so that if you need to refer back to it to teach other players how to do this, you know that all that information is there. But I'm actually going to do it on this video. Therefore, we're not going to go through this section. The next section in the documentation is discussing permissions, and we're going to get into that once we're in game. There's also a couple of F1 console commands as well as chat commands that we're going to go over in game. Nicodemus has also planned ahead a little bit so that we can break certain aspects of this plugin down based on permission level. So if we only want specific groups to have specific accesses to different things, we can do that all with the built-in permissions profiles that Nicodemus has already built in. Don't worry, we're gonna get into that too. All right, so all that documentation is definitely available. Remember, the link is in the video description down below so that you can access all of that information. But for right now, let's just go in game and we can immediately start playing around with this and see what we can come up with. All right, so first things first, here we are down on the ground. We're looking up at the top of this power pole and yes, I can see that there's a red button at the top there. So I know that this power pole is going to give me power, but I need to get up there so that I can actually make some repairs. So first things first, let's throw some ladders up on this power pole. Now you're gonna notice that it shows up with the red error saying, no, you can't place this there. As soon as you click it, it's actually going to place that item there. It's also gonna say in chat, this failed. It didn't fail obviously, because here we are climbing up the ladder. So once we get to the top, we can actually interact with the button at the very top in the middle, and we can see what is actually going on. As you can see, a GUI pops up and it tells you what we need in order to get power out of this power pole. So with this particular power pole, I have zero root combiners that spawn naturally with this power pole. So obviously, first things first, let's put in the root combiners. One, two, three, four. Four. and all I did was right clicked on the root combiner and it pulls it into the inventory that I'm looking at. So now I have four root combiners on my power pole. And yes, before anybody asks any questions, as long as you have building privilege, you can pick these root combiners back up just like you would anything else. And in order to place them again, obviously we interact with our button again and we can just drop them back in there. Yes, they do take damage just like they would in any other application. So the only other thing that we absolutely have to have, oh, and before I get any further, you don't have to have all four root combiners combiners installed on your power pole, you can do this with just one if you wanted to. Obviously with four root combiners installed, you would get four outputs coming from your power pole. Obviously, if you only put one root combiner in, you only get one output. So let's dump a fuse in here and see what happens. Boom, now we're generating power. As you can see, my bar went green up here and it's telling you exactly how much power this power pole is generating from the grid. So in this case, because of the time of day it is, we're at 50% efficiency. So the efficiency spans from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. I think it is. Maybe it's the other way around, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm not sure which, but those values can all be configured in the configuration file for grid power. So as it stands right now, we're generating three rust watts or RW from the grid over four outlets. This is without putting any tech trash into the inventory for the power pole. As I start dumping tech trash into it, it increases its efficiency, therefore increasing the amount of power that it's outputting. But for right now, let's just leave that the way it is and let's try and connect this up to our base. Now, one thing that I highly recommend recommend you do is actually pull the fuse out. You don't want to be dealing with any live power because if you do, you're going to get electrocuted. In fact, here, I'll just show you what that looks like. So here I am. I grabbed a power line from a splitter, I think, inside my base, and I'm just going to try and hook it up to this root combiner right here and we'll see what happens. As soon as I connect it, it electrocutes me. It says, nope, you can't do that. But if you look at what I'm wearing, I'm not wearing the applicable protective gear or PPE that is required in order for me to be working with electricity. So if I were to change what I'm wearing and just change it to a hazmat suit, I could go back and do the exact same thing again, connect to my base inside, go back out and hook up to the root combiner. That will allow me to connect without shocking me to death. So if you don't have a hazmat suit and you're not ready to go yet and you still want to be hooking up Power, just make sure you remove the fuse before you make any electrical connections whatsoever to the power pole. Then you won't get shocked. You won't die. Now, before I go any further, and I'm sure somebody actually noticed it, I'll explain to you the second kind of additional feature that comes with this plugin, and that is the ability to add slack to our wiring. From default, within Rust, anytime you're running electrical wiring or Christmas lights or hoses or whatever, you know that everything goes in very straight lines. It's not very realistic. So, Nick 
Nicodemus has made it so that we can create the visuals of realistic wiring. So if I select my wire tool, you'll see on the top of my screen right there, it says wire select. And right now it's at 19.94. But if I use shift and control, I can change that wire slack up and down. So obviously the higher the number, the more slack there is on that line. So if I do wire slack at zero, this is going to look like a native default rust connection. And as you can see there, it's just a straight line. But if I add some slack to that, let's just add one. Now you can see it actually put a slack in that line and it actually hangs like it should. Now granted, you wouldn't want to have it going through your garage door or anything like that. You'd want to plan that out a little bit better. Let's try it right here. Can we connect it right to the corner of this building? That's why I put this little nose out here. So no slack yet. Let's see if we connect it to something. There we go. Yeah, so it did slack after I took it to a connection termination point. So we're currently creating four watts right now, and we're sending those four watts into this part of my base right here, down into this splitter right here. And we can go out from here and route things normally and bring it inside the base just like so. And we can connect this up to our battery just like that. And so there you go. Now we've got it going from one splitter to another splitter and into the battery. And as you can see, I'm generating power. Now, some of you are going to have a problem with this. I can see it already because you're looking at my base saying, well, how do we know that he's not hooked up to that windmill or that solar panel? Let's just get rid of all of the things that we know that we have on this base that could be generating power. All right, so that is everything destroyed. And of course, we're still generating power. So I just put a load on it so that you could actually tell that it was actually doing something. So max output is 100, active usages is two. One of them is the switch, the other one is the light. That's what we have hooked up to this network right now. So what happens if we go back into our power pole and let's start adding some tech trash and see what this actually does to the efficiency of this power pole. So we're currently routing five watts right now from the grid over the four outlets. Let's start dropping in tech trash and see what this does to our numbers. So I'm at 26 tech trash right now of a maximum of 50. That can be changed in the configuration file. But now we're creating 123 rust watts from this single power pole. And we can keep going right up to the 50 max level. And as you can see, it's significantly increasing the amount of power that we're getting out of this single power pole. Another thing worth noting while we're here is fuses that are used on the power pole last significantly longer than they do when you're using them in puzzles around the map. The puzzle fuse lengths are not affected just when they're being used in one of the power poles. So you might be asking, can you run a line directly from each one of those root combiners into your base? And the answer is yes, of course you can. You basically own this power pole now because it's inside of our build privilege. So it's protected by that same functionality. This basically becomes part of our base. I'm just hitting shift there. I'm going to change this wire slack to exactly two so that I can show you the differences between the different slacks. So that's two. Let me grab another root combiner here. I'll increase this one to three and then I'll grab the fourth one over here and I'm going to increase this one to four. Or, as you can see, one through four is kind of the most realistic numbers that I can see so far. And I'm just going to remove grid number one. I'm going to put my slack all the way back down to zero. This is default rust connection. So this is what those different slacks look like. The top one is zero, which is rust default slack, which is zero slack. The second one is one slack. The third one is two slack. And the fourth one is three slack. And again, this can be changed by using shift and control on your keyboard while you're holding a wire tool in your hands. So this is control. I'm increasing the slack. This is shift. I'm reducing the slack. While we're still at the configuration file, we might as well go through the rest of this. At the beginning of the video, I told you that you can define different articles of clothing that will protect against electrical shock. By default, this is what's set up. Hazmat suit, scientist heavy suit, hazmat suit, scientist, that's the blue one. Peacekeeper, that's the green one. Base suit, we know what that is. Now this null next to each one of these things is basically saying that any future skins that might come out for each one of these items, it doesn't care which skin this item has, it's going to work. So any hazmat suit is going to work fine. The reason I'm specifying this is if you look down here in the pants and the hoodie section, you can see that there's specific skin ID numbers that are defined in the configuration file. That means only these skin IDs are going to protect against electrical shock. So by default, this hoodie and pants combination is what's going to provide the most amount of protection other than the hazmat suit, the heavy scientist suit, etc, etc. So if somebody has these skins in their inventory, I've never actually seen them before, so I don't know how somebody would have access to them. Or if you want to allow your players to be able to skin their hoodie and pants into these using skin skin box, 
skins or skinner just make sure you have these skin ids added to one of those plugins now underneath the protective clothing aspect of the configuration file for grid power is all of the other parameters that the plugin has to abide by so you can directly edit these values right here but this is where the chat commands or the F1 commands in the game actually come in handy. So in game, if we type GP underscore CFG, that's going to bring up our current configuration settings for grid power. And here we can make these changes as we see fit. So let's just go through these really quick. So grid power constant is currently set at false. The grid starts generating power at 8 a.m. and it stops generating power at 20 hours. Generator chance power line functionality. That is basically the likelihood that a power pole somewhere on your server is going to be determined determined as an actual power source. So by default, this is set to 33%. If you wanted to make every single one of your power poles have power at them, change this to 100%. We can also change the minimum amount of power that a power pole will generate. We can also change the maximum amount of power. We can change the minimum number of outlets, the maximum number of outlets. That's currently set at zero and four respectively. So that's either zero root combiners on a power pole all the way up to four root combiners on a power pole. We can change how much the power is going to increase by for every tech trash we install into our power pole. Default is set to five. We can also change the maximum number of tech trash that can be installed onto a power pole. At default is set to 50. Change that number to whatever you feel fits your server the best. And then the last one there is we can change how long a fuse is going to last once it's been installed into our power pole. Default this is set to 12,000 seconds, which works out to just under three and a half hours. All right, so that's basically covering the basics of grid power. I know there's a whole lot more detail I could have gone into on each different section, but in the interest of keeping a video at a reasonable length, I'm going to stop there. But before I go, don't leave yet. I want to actually show you what the wire slack aspect of this plugin actually does to Christmas lights. I feel like this aspect of the plugin could very easily get glazed over, and I didn't want to miss this. And I think this is going to be a big part. A lot of role play players are really going to enjoy this. That's the aspect that we can add by using the slack aspect of this tool. Let's add some power to these lights and let's turn our switch on. So you can see the wiring is way more realistic now that we can add a slack to it. That top line there, that's just the default rust line. I mean, it's in a straight line. It's boring, right? Why not be able to add the slack to the Christmas lights? That works for Christmas lights, power lines, hoses. It's just a sick little feature. I'm glad Nicodemus added this into the grid power plugin. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think the slack aspect of this plugin should be broken out into to its own thing? I don't know. I'll be honest with you though, when I was first told about this aspect of the plugin, I was like, all right, cool. That's, I mean, whatever. And then I started playing around with it. I was like, you know what? I, I even messaged Nicodemus. I said, this aspect of the plugin is actually pretty cool. I was really satisfied with it. And just in the interest of full disclosure, let's have a look at the time. The time is currently 18.87. So let's have a look at what our current output is right now. It's at 10 rust watts right now. And as the sun is setting, getting closer to that 20 hundred hours, you can see that number decreasing right in front of our eyes. And as soon as we hit that 20, the power coming from the grid is actually going to drop to zero. So hopefully we will have stored enough power in our battery in order to survive the night. And of course, in this case we have. There we go. We hit 10 o'clock at night. All of our power has dropped to zero. We have nothing coming out of our power grid right now. And because we stored a bunch of it into our battery, we have plenty of power to last throughout the night. If we have turrets or lights or whatever, we're good to go. All right. That is the grid power plugin from Nicodemus available from loan.design. Again, link in the video description down below. I truly believe that every RP server in the world right now should have this plugin on it, but it's not just for the RP server. This can be usable on on every server. I hope to see some of you check out this plugin. I've been waiting for this. Actually, if you're in my Discord, you'll know that I actually put a call out for this plugin. I want to say about a month, month and a half ago. And somebody messaged me privately and they said, Derp, somebody's already working on this. Don't blow his cover because he wanted to announce it to the public. This concept definitely seems like low hanging fruit. I can't believe somebody hasn't come up with this sooner. I'm super glad that Nicodemus came up with a way of doing it. And the way that he did it is absolutely perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Better. I don't want to be able to plug into a power pole and just have power. I need to do some work in order to get that power out. I love the fact that you have to have protective clothing on in order to do any of the work. I also love that this could go on a basically vanilla server and people would still be successful. They'd still be able to find root combiners. They'd still easily be able to find tech trash. They would still be able to get power from the grid. I really like this plugin. I'm buying this plugin from my own personal servers. I hope you guys do too. I haven't even discussed working out any 
kind of a promo code with Nicodemus yet. I will broach the idea with him, but it's okay if he doesn't do it. This is worth what he's charging for it right now. But if we are able to actually strike up some sort of a promo code, I will change the pinned comment from whatever it currently is right now to the promo code and the instructions on how to use it. No promises there, but know that I am going to have the conversation. All right, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. So until next Friday, I hope you guys are staying safe and taking care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.